We're gonna do an upgrade to the pond. Been talking about this for a good long while. You can see how overgrown the food plot is. We got the Bass Pro Shops, Cabela's food plot, which is not going to fare too well today. I don't know on it, to be honest. I don't know if anything's actually consuming or eating any of this. Uh, if we had the deer coming in here more regularly, they might make use of it. So what we were talking about, oh, there's a bunch of little frogs. I'm gonna show you those in a second. But uh, we've got the starts here with the cattails of a shallow end of the pond. Now there's geotextile that goes all the way down into the middle and then it gets really deep so nothing can really grow down there. You might be able to hear the excavator on the way. So the big project is we're going to pull out a section of the food plot over here to make a kind of a riparian zone. And so the idea obviously is to deal with the algae situation. We put some of the uh, Condor's uh, pond conditioner in as well as the dye so you can see it's a nice deep blue color right now which is providing shade so the algae can't grow up so there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten plants or so but not nearly enough to consume all of the nitrogen that's coming in from us feeding the fish so kevin's got the tool of choice over here he's got a little mini x this is the sunniest area which is obviously why the cattails are growing right here i'm probably going to go over a little bit of a game plan so we got to decide, we got a mosquito, oh it's squished, I guess it doesn't matter anymore. There's uh, there's many mosquitoes. Yeah. See my new toy? I did. Talking about the little mini X, it's got a pretty good scoop on there, what's it, a two foot bucket? It's two foot bucket, it's oversized. It's so, a little tippy, but you know what? <laughs> it's a little tippy As long as you know <laughs> what you're doing, well it's, yeah, I think, because I opted for the, the 18 inch bucket, for the, uh, the digging bucket and the two foot bucket for the grading bucket. It's slightly oversized, but you know what? It, it's got more power than it needs. So well, just you don't tip yourself. There's lots of mosquitoes. <laughs> you just pick them off like little <laughs> monkeys. Did you call before we dig? Yep. Okay. You can see here real quick, we've got a good mess of cattails. Those ones started from nothing. I didn't put them there. We got to be a little bit tactful about how we do this simply for the fact that we don't want all the silt to wash into the pond. So what we're going to do is excavate back here. <laughs> are you going to tickle? It's a little tickle. Like it's in the East Coast when the, when the ocean goes into the land, it's a little tickle. Yes. We're going to do probably a little bit more than a tickle, but we're not going to connect the two right today. We're going to let her settle. You want to like just leave that there and yeah. dig a tickle here. Yeah, leave a leave a, like a foot or two and then we will maybe we'll carefully dig that out by hand and slowly connect the two. I think we should just the, the nitrogen has to flow over here for it to work. Sure. Well, that's the idea. You know right? the science, I have the muscle. Well, yeah, there you go. So, you want to dig or you want to talk? As you guys can see, the water's starting to fill in a little bit more. It's all groundwater, spring fed. And we haven't uh, connected to the pond here. So there's gonna be a bit of a lip or an edge. And then maybe we'll hand dig that, or maybe nature will just take its course and connect the ponds very slowly. So this is gonna be obviously low lying. We're going down about two, two or three feet, about two feet. And it's almost straight down. The cattail is normally around the edges and can go up to maybe a foot or so. And some other plants like arrowhead likes to be in the more drier zone. Uh, cattails too, but they want to be, they want to have their feet wet. So too deep here will mean that the cattails won't grow, but other plants will. And there's other, others like lily pads, which will send the pad way, way up in the air. So that, those can be a lot deeper. Um, so we might explore adding some lily pads then to the shallow edge here. Mm -hmm. 
So now we got a bit of a, bit of a judgment call. So Kevin's asking, how close do we want to get to the pond? Well, we don't want to connect the pond right now because what will happen then is all this muddy water down here will go into the pond, which is obviously what we're trying to avoid. It's kind of interesting. I don't know if you can see right where my finger's pointing here. There's a natural spring happening. I gotta watch myself. Kevin doesn't give me a body check. You're good. But uh, there's, this, there's some spring water coming in here, so we're actually gonna get a third spring coming into the pond. It might have been coming into the pond anyway, but uh, that's obviously a benefit. And it looks like it's cool, clear water. So while Kevin's digging, I can talk to you about some of the future plans we have going here. We've got a good, nice slope coming up the hill and we've got some sun up there, which will be ideal for a little stream, which you guys have been asking for. There's a couple, couple logistical issues with making a stream. One is and having sufficient power to move water. Moving air, like with the condors, aerators, easy, solar power, no problem. But uh, it's a little trickier to move a good volume of water. So we're going to try to figure that out in future videos, so you have to stick around through the pond series. We've got our floating bog here. Put this in a while ago. I don't know if it's doing too well, you guys can tell. And I think the plants are having to adjust to having additional sunlight and then having all that extra moisture. So it might not be the right plant. It is a uh, marsh marigold, so it's not like one that likes to be totally submerged in water. So it may be suffering a little bit, but we can get that going and it floats out. It's a nitrogen recovery system as well. So if it doesn't work with the marsh marigold, we'll just substitute in another plant and we'll be off to the races. There's tons of other aquatic plants. Otherwise, everything's good. Uh, we, we, I uh, went fishing with my dad so I can show you a couple clips of those. We figured out how to catch fish out of the pond with the dye because the visibility is not as good with the dye. I'm gonna catch a couple anyway, so. Okay. And try it, see what happens. When we get running right away, it won't be hard. Oh, got off. Worms went all down to the bottom since mm -hmm. I had a piece of uh, newspaper on the top mm -hmm. and they will come up, but then after you disturb them, then they don't want to come up anymore. I'll just do a half worm. Bear. Yep. Throw up on the shore here. Knock him out. Knock hmm. him out? Yeah, wanna knock him out? Nope. <laughs> Maybe not. Yeah, every time they're just bump, yeah. bumping it. Uh, ideally, you'd let it sit a little longer. Like you could let it sit on the bottom, they grab it. But there's too many snags. I let it go small. What happens if you catch Clark or Lloyd? That's it. You're just gonna catch them? Yeah. You're not putting it in the back? No. Well, they're spooked now. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. You catch one, yeah. I caught I caught another one. Oh, there is one. Missed them. The longer you can let it sit without getting snagged. Hmm. As long as you know where everything is. 
Is he in the green bin there? Um, oh. Oh, he's wrapped around. Is he wrapped around the uh, duck? No. no. He's, he's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> Whack him real good this time. More. Keep going. Pick up a rock and no, that, that's the best way to do it. Do it again. Is he quivering yet? There. See the fish quiver? Yeah. That means he's dead. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. Oh, you want to make it look three times bigger than One, it is. Two, three. <laughs> awesome. I try to go uh, to the stock lakes anymore, and I'm like, I have 150 fish in here. <laughs> exactly. Let me go all day without a bite. Yeah, you, you can. It, you got to look at it as an adventure. Whoa. An event. Yeah. Uh, trying to get away from the ducks. And then have you, can let it, oh. you can let it hit bottom there because it's all rock. Like this. If it goes down rock, there's a green, a green bin there. But over here is a shelf with a, a bunch of wood laid on top of it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it got caught on the sinker. Yeah, because it slid right, it slid right down to the hook. I had a bite on just a little piece of worm. Oh, there's one. Feels like a small one. No, maybe not. Smaller. You want to let him back? Yeah. Yeah, that's one to take home, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> no. Yeah, I try not to let them swallow it. That looked bigger though. Think we can catch a fish with what we got? The bare hook? I'm gonna try again. Oh, come right up after it. No, I'm okay. Oh, I got a fish. Oh, took the whole thing. Busted the line. Yeah. I didn't pull very hard. Watch how fast they'll catch one. Uh oh. Uh oh. There's too much line on that reel. It has to be. It's not the line. Yeah, it just has to sit a little bit longer. Yeah. There's one there. <coughs> Dropped it. Oh! You got a whale. It's a big one. No, if you want to. No. Oh. Uh oh, get out of there. Oh shoot, that was a big one. Yeah. Did you see how big that one? <laughs> oh no. No, he's gonna be fine. Did you see that? Yeah, you that was a him. three. That was the three pounder. That was the three pounder. Or more. No. He got, got off. It's when you horse them. <laughs> three. You want to catch one? That was a big one. Yeah, it was. Put that white cross. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> The edges are maybe a little bit steeper, a little bit deeper than we had planned, but I think it's gonna, it'll work out in the, in the long run anyway. It's already filling up with water. The water is all, it's pretty clear for having a, how much stirred, how much we have stirred it up. And then you can see there's some springs running in here already. And then we got maybe two feet ledge here with maybe two or three inches overflow. So that water, if it comes up, will be fine to kind of slope in here. Any of the extra water will just come in here, but that water also is going to rise up to meet the level over here. And then this is going to sit for, we'll probably let it sit for a week or two. Just to kind of let the water settle out. 
and uh, we're gonna let the, it grate itself too. We could play around with this indefinitely and just get a nice little even slope. And so the edges left and right, those will slough in over time and then we'll create probably a nice gradual slope even going back a little bit further. So the footprint will widen as everything in here erodes. We're not gonna put any geotextile, no rock. I took out the rock lip over here, most of it, but there's still gonna be a lip there. And that'll just kind of slowly slough down and settle down. And then this will all fill in with those cattails. They're gonna send roots, runners, all the way back here, all around the whole edge. And then as nature goes, everything wants to return how it was before. So everything will kind of make a nice, gradual, gentle slope. The hope is that the fish don't come in here too, too much and stir things up because there's no geotextile, nothing to keep all that knocked down. And uh, so we'll see how it goes. We'll I'll check back in in a week or two. This should be nice and settled out. Uh, I grabbed a couple of, well, probably a couple dozen of those little frogs. So I want to throw them in the pond. I actually want to see if the fish will grab them. They're hugging pretty tight to the shore and I'm guessing it's because they're trying to escape the trout. And every once in a while you hear a drought jump, so they're probably picking something off. I don't know if they grab the tadpoles so much, but those little frogs look pretty enticing. So these little frogs are about the perfect trout size, uh, and they're both the same as the, the food pellets. But the water is the same color as the frogs, so it, it's pretty dark. The question is whether they're actually going to be able to see these. Um, but these frogs are super vulnerable when they get out in the middle of the water. There's a couple of different stages, I think, that they're in right now. But they're, they're turning over to frog. Once they get rid of the tail, then they're going to mess off into the woods where they're going to live out their life essentially as predators looking for bugs and insects to live off of. And then they're going to complete the life cycle back here in this pond. So digging this pond has uh, added life to the area. So let's see what happens here. If I get one splash, I'll be pretty impressed. I'll collect some tadpoles while Kevin's filming to see what happens, but these guys are pretty fast too. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get any. I don't think they're hungry, Chris. I don't think they want the tadpoles. I don't think they're hungry for tadpoles. I don't think they can see it. Oh, there's one. Well, it looks like maybe a couple swiped them. I don't know. I've seen tadpole. I've seen rainbow trout eat tadpoles before. Well, there's one. Just grabbed it. But uh, I don't know if it's a preferred food. I don't know. You guys let me know down below if you've ever used tadpoles for fishing or seen fish eat tadpoles or seen tadpoles in fish stomachs. I don't know. But uh, I imagine a few of them get picked off. That's why they're sticking to the edges there. They know what's going on. There's a couple. There, there we go. A couple grabbing stuff at the surface. I don't know if they're grabbing the tadpoles or it could be bugs and other things they're grabbing. But Well, I got a brand new order from one of my favorite sponsors. You guys have been hearing a lot about all the good stuff I get from Princess Auto. And uh, this one I actually remember only half of what I ordered because like a ton of things went on sale. Slingshot ammo. I got, it was on sale. So I got this one quarter inch steel to try out. It's, it's pretty small stuff. And then I got 10 packs of the more common 3.8s. So I am fully loaded for squirrel season. Like I got a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of a stuff. And I actually might buy some more uh, half inch as well. I also got a dustpan because my wife wanted a dustpan. <laughs> and then I got uh, really cheap or uh, inexpensive, I should say. It's not cheap, it's good quality paracord 550 paracord this was like a couple of bucks 500 or 100 feet uh, by three and then you can never have too many ratchet straps so i got a bunch of ratchet straps too these are good for tree stands so some of it outdoor stuff indoor stuff but uh pretty much princess auto is the deal you guys can grab like whatever you want so, anyway just thought i would mention that I'm looking forward to getting into the hunting season again, maybe whack some squirrels. It's been a few days. Things look really, really good. You can see that it's equalized from the mini pond here to the main pond. To give you guys a bit of a perspective on the size of this thing, because it's hard, the camera doesn't really do it very much justice. If you go to that end, this area looks big, the pond. And then if you go to this end, this area looks big. But I would say it's probably about 20% maybe 15, maybe 10% of the area. And I know those cattails that are already 
established here, we'll just keep moving backwards to expand in this area because again, we're not putting any geotextile down, not putting any rocks in here. We have the cattail, but there's also this little green grass uh, coming in here and that established itself kind of naturally. I'm not sure what kind of plant that is, but it's kind of a wispy plant and all those little frogs like to hang out in there. It's good cover for them. We'll grab a pail. These are the uh, syrup pails, but uh, we'll return them in good order. The, that would be the cattail root here, which I kind of destroyed, but that's going to produce that node that's running. So all these could be from the same plant. Every stalk that we add, we'll add uh, something that will suck up the nitrogen. So these nodes will spread. The more we grab, the faster it will spread. Here we go. Oh, that one just came right out. Huh. That's interesting. I don't know if it rotted or I cut off the root. I can plant that one, see what happens. Well, there goes the shovel. <laughs> Can you guys see? That one's done. Donezo. But I did get a bunch already. And I do have another shovel. There's one, and two, three, there's a double, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I might go get another shovel and maybe double that. But that do sh shovel not gonna do, broskies. She donezo. <laughs> Well, the handle's still good, so we can always retool that. Lots of shovels at Princess Auto. This one didn't come from there. A pail is a must, or two pails, for this. And you don't want to source these too far from your pond because they're heavy. I think we're going to throw these over here and we'll let it naturalize backwards. I think that's our best bet because this is the right depth for cattails already. And we can just really easily just plop them down. That's the broken one, so we'll have to dig that one in a little bit. It may take a bit for this to look right, but a pond is a working progress. Let me spread the base out a little bit. Make it get soil contact. I think even a little piece of root would work. If that's all you had, you could slice off a piece of whatever you could find. And this one here has uh, been broken off, so we'll just chuck it down on the deep enough in there and we'll see what happens. Maybe that guy will make it. I need a break. These are flipping heavy. I saved back four or five really nice ones, maybe six, I don't know. They're kind of in bunches. Oh, it's like, it's like doing the fireman's carry for uh, workout. Fireman's carry, one weight on either side, or you can do lunar, unilaterally, which is more for core training and core stability, and you walk. And you walk till you can't walk anymore. And uh, that's an athletic way of training your body for sport or just resiliency in life. In case you need to carry some cattails one time in your life. And, uh, you know, you're going to build a pond. All right, so if you didn't watch last video, or one of the last videos, I made this planter. It's actually looking better than it was before, dare I say. It's not looking great. We got some burnt here. And that may be because of change of habitat. It's now in full sun. Or it could be that it's they're too wet, the roots are too wet. Or just from being the roots disturbed what have you and you kind of get an idea what's going to happen here is i'm going to put the cattails down and uh we're going to see how they fare maybe they won't fare any better because they're tall and they need a solid base but experimentation 
is always worth doing. Imagine once this becomes a solid mass of stuff, the roots will do the work. So for now, we're just gonna have to let the plant do what it does. And uh, that's like everything else in life, try to survive. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and uh, this doesn't actually live here all the time, it travels. It's a, finds it, it goes to a different spot in the pond pretty much all day. I've seen it on that side, I've seen it on this side. Toss a little bit of feed in there and see what happens. I don't know if you can tell, but those fish are hesitant to come up to the surface, so they're just mouthing the bottom. That, that means the water is uh, on the warmer side and they don't want to get up in the water column. So they're staying down low and they're just basically going to grab whatever kind of sinks after a little while. This is floating feed, but after a while it'll sink and I see little swirls every once in a while. So that tells me those fish are down real low, staying at the bottom where it's nice and cool. They're doing exactly what they should be doing. So here's the pond conditioner, Nature's Pond Conditioner from Nature's Pond Care. It's a Condors product. It's a blend of all natural enzymes and beneficial bacteria. There's nothing toxic about it. Nothing that's gonna bother your fish or you or swimming, swimming or anything like that. It basically digests the algae and I'm a little bit feeling a little bit burnt right now. I should go out in the middle and uh, dump it by the water. Aerators from also from condors, but I'm just gonna walk around the pond and spread it out because you know what? The aerators are doing such a good job. We'll see, see if you can fish that out. But anyway, I got a whole series, whole pond series. You go back to the start and figure out how we've dug everything. So that's two jugs in there, but we had a massive algae overgrowth. So if you guys enjoyed this video, subscribe or not, I don't care. I'm back to subscribe or not, I don't care. Because I'm doing mostly videos that I want to do, that I'm ready to do and prepared to do. And one of them is the pond series. It's been an interesting challenge for me. It's something new. It's something that I haven't mastered yet. And it's something I'm interested to learn about as you are probably too. So I'll catch you guys on the next video.